in uh, our previous lecture, we, uh, we, we saw that any LTI uh, resistive one port can be represented, even though uh, if it's quite a complicated circuit, in the sense that it has, even if it has many components, let's say hundreds of components, if it's LTI resistive, then it can always be uh, represented by and by represented by we mean uh, seen from the port terminals. It can always be represented by a very simple circuit that contains two components. One of those components was uh, an LTI resistor, and the other component was an independent source. If the independent source is independent voltage source, then that representation is called the Thevenin equivalent circuit of the given one port. If it's an independent current source, that representation is called the uh, Norton equivalent circuit for the given one. Okay. So let's quickly remember uh, those concepts and how we find the Thevenin and Norton parameters for the given one port. And then today we will uh, apply uh, those ideas once again on, uh, on a simple example. So, we talked about the last time the feminine and non-ton equivalent circuits. Okay. So, this is the scenario. Suppose that we are given a one port circuit with port terminals labeled, let's say A and B, and port voltage and the port current is uh, labeled as follows. Okay. So let's call it N, and this is an LTI resistor 1 port. Okay. And Thevenin's theorem said that this uh, one port can be represented by or is equivalent to the following very simple circuit. Okay. A B plus minus B I I theorem and B theorem. And Norton's theorem said that this one port is equal to the following representation. Norton and we saw that our Norton is equal to our theory. Okay. And by equivalence we mean the following. Suppose that you take this thing and that thing to the lab and you perform any uh, measurement regarding voltage and current that you uh, see at the port terminals. Then from this circuit and from this much simpler circuit you always get the same readings. Okay. Therefore they have the same port characteristics or same IV characteristics. That's why, or that's when we use this equivalence sign. Likewise, this is also equivalent to uh, given one port. And since both this and that are equivalent to the same one port, they must be equivalent to each other also. Okay. Now, for this equivalence to hold clearly, we should be uh, we should choose some special determinant voltage and uh, r theremin resistance, or special i norton current and uh, r norton resistance. Okay. And how we figure out those parameters from a given one port was as follows: computing the parameters v theremin, i norton, and r theremin. This is what we do. You take your one port, which is given, and what you do is you let the port terminals be disconnected to the outside port. That is, you let the port terminals be open circuit, okay? 
and you step into this car from zero, this car from zero. And in that case, you measure a voltage, okay? And that voltage we're calling the B open circuit voltage. Okay, and that open circuit voltage must equal the feminine voltage. So that's how you compute or measure the feminine voltage, okay, from a given one or that. So that for open circuit voltage equals feminine voltage. Okay. And how about non concurrent? Again, you take your one port, okay, A, B. This time what you do is you short the port terminals, okay? When you short the port terminals, clearly this voltage now is zero. And then through that wire, there will be some current flowing, okay? And the current flowing in this direction which we're calling the short circuit current, by short circuit, must equal the normal current in the normal implementation. Okay? So this is, by the way, this is the colon, and this is normal equal circuit. Okay? And how about our feminine? Okay, here, right here. What you do is, if you already have feminine voltage in normal current, R feminine simply equals V feminine over I naught. Okay. Or, there's another way to uh, measure or compute feminine resistance, and it's as follows. Again, you take your one port N, but this time you kill all the independent sources inside N. Okay, all independent sources are switched off, meaning that all the independent current sources are now open circuits, and all the independent voltage sources are now short circuits. Okay, all independent sources are killed. Okay. And in that case, this thing now can be represented by just a single resistance. And that resistance we call the input resistance, see from the port terminals, A, B. Okay. And then that input resistance equals R theta. Okay, so short circuit current. equals I know and input resistance when all the sources, independent sources inside one port is killed equals R theory. Okay. Or R theory can be computed ratio V feminine to I naught. Or if you have R feminine and V feminine, you can figure out I naught. In other words, if you have any two of these three parameters, then the remaining third can be easily obtained from this relation. Okay. Now let's see an example. Viewed 
by the resistor R. Indeed, we will also look at the Chiron draw very soon. And what should R be? How we should choose? How should we choose that resistance so that? voltage across its terminals equals this given uh, design parameter, let's say minus 7 volts. Okay. Now the circuit that we're talking about is the following. So that voltage drop across the disturbance is minus 7 volts. And polarity of that voltage is given to be plus minus PR. Okay. Okay. Now how we're gonna now proceed is we're gonna figure out open circuit voltage and that will give us the Thevenin voltage by open circuit voltage. I mean we're going to take this resistor out and then we're, going to, we're not going to connect anything here and there will be a voltage drop across those two or between those two points okay, of nodes and that voltage will be our open circuit voltage or Thevenin voltage and then we will take this out again and replace it by a wire, that is, we can short circuit these two nodes, those two terminals, and then there will be some current flowing in that direction, and that current will give us non tonk current. Once we have a feminine voltage and a non tonk current, their ratio will give us a feminine uh, resistance, okay? And with the feminine resistance, we will have the uh, feminine coolant circuit. And then we can move on to the second part. Here is the solution. First, we move the uh, resistor R and find the open circuit voltage. Be careful about labeling. Okay, we choose this term to be A and this term to be B. Okay, it doesn't matter which is A, which is B, but once you make that choice, then you have to go along with that choice. Okay, now this is A, B, and then according to our notation, this was our open circuit voltage or the polarity of our open circuit voltage. Okay, 
Now, we try to figure out now this voltage and that voltage will be our 7 newton voltage. Let's apply node voltage analysis method. Okay, for this what we do, we first choose a reference node, let this be node, our ground node, and then we label the remaining nodes. Okay, let this be E1, and let this be the node voltage for the second node. Not that we don't do the labeling for this node because the voltage of this node is directly known as 10 volts because between this node and reference node there is an independent voltage source. Okay, so we have two unknowns and by writing node equations we will obtain equal, uh, we will obtain all the equations necessary to be able to figure out E1 and E2 and once we have the known voltages E1 and E2 their difference E1 minus E2 will immediately give us the open circuit voltage. Okay, so let's begin writing node equations at nodes 1 and 2. Node 1. Okay. Now, since it's open circuit, we have only two wires, this and that. Okay. This current plus that current equals 0. This current is E1 minus 10 minus over the resistance in between, which is 5. And this current is E1 over 10. Okay. And that, by case here, must equal 0. Note that this current here is zero because this is open circuit now. This immediately gives us E1. Okay, E1 equals 6.6666, okay, 20 or 3 volts. And then let's do the same thing at the second node, node 2. This time we have three currents, this current, this current, and that current. The sum must equal zero. That current is minus one half Vx. Okay? What's Vx? We don't know yet. This current is E2 over 20. And this current is minus one half. And the sum must equal zero. Now, there's an unknown, unknown here, Vx, so we have to express it in terms of our formulation variables, which is E1 and E2, and that's very easy because Vx is given here, and it's between this node and that node. This node has node voltage 10, and this node is E1, which we already know. Therefore, the difference is 10 minus E1, which is 10 over 3. Okay. So Vx equals 10 minus E1. E1 is found already. So that's 10 over 3 volts. Okay. And then if you replace Vx here by 10 over 3, you immediately get E2. Okay. E2 turns out to equal 160 over 3 volts. Okay. So we have E1, we have E2, that means we now have the open circuit voltage. E1 minus E2, and that's 20 over 3 minus 160 over 3, which yields 1 over 140 over 3. Okay. Therefore, we now have the feminine voltage of R, feminine equivalent circuit, which is minus 140 over 3. So, step one is completed. Now, for step two, we're going to compute the short circuit current. So, let's do that. Step two, then find short circuit current. So, let me redraw the circuit. Vx 
x, where the x is given as here. This is 5 ohms. This is 10 ohms. This is 10 ohms. And now, by a short sort of current, we mean the current that will flow from A to B when you short those two terminals in this direction from A to B. So this is what we are after. Okay. Short sort of current. Now, again, let's do it by non-voltage analysis method. This time it's even easier because we have just a single unknown non-voltage. Why is that? Because, well, again, let this be our ground node. This non-voltage is already known as 10 volts. And then what remains, this node, this node, this node, this node, in fact, they're just, just the same node because they're all connected by short circuit. Therefore, we have only one no voltage, and that's E1. I know no voltage, that's E1. Okay, so let's write down case here that this only unknown node, and that will give us E1. And once we have E1, that means we can compute this current and that current, and if you have this current and that current by case here, writing case here at that node, it will give you a short circuit current, and that will be our mountain current. So let's do that quickly. KCL at node 1. Okay, so what we have here is we have okay, this current, this current, and I short circuit, but we don't know what I short circuit is, but we know that this, whatever this current is, it must equal this current plus this current plus that current. Okay. Therefore, we can sum 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 currents and equate it to 0. Okay, if you will, you can consider all this thing see all that thing as a single point because all that wire is a single number. Okay, so what we have is this current which is E1 minus 10 over the resistance in between. And then we have this current which is E1 over 10. Then we have this current which is minus 1 half the x which is on again. This current is E1 over 20. And finally, this current is directly known because we have a current source with there, minus 1. And by case here, that 5 currents must add up to 0. Okay, how about Vx? Vx is this normal voltage minus this normal voltage, therefore, Vx equals 10 minus E1. Then replacing Vx here by 10 minus E1, we have 1 over 5, 1 over 10, 1 half, 120. Okay, these are all the coefficients that, that's multiplying E1 in the first equation. E1, and then we throw all the norms to the other side, which is we have 10 over 5, 2. We have one here, and from the x we have five. Okay, and then solving this equation, this by the way is 17 over 20, yields the only unknown voltage to equal 160 over 17 volts. Okay, now we know what E1 is. And now we can, using that information, we can figure out the short circuit count. That's what we will do. For that, let's write once again uh, KCL. Okay. Once again, KCL at node 1. Okay, this time we're going to leave our short circuit as it is. So what we have here is okay, E1 minus 10 over 5 plus 
e1 over 10 this time plus the Schroeser ratio. That equals zero. We know what I, uh, e1 is, therefore we can pull from that equation the short circuit card. So I short circuit equals 2 minus 3 over 10 e1. And E1 is computed here, 160 over 70, and that yields minus 14 over 17 amps. Okay. That means I not only equals minus 14 over 17 amps. Okay. So we have therefore everything we need for the first part of the problem. Hence, our thevenin equals we thevenin over i -moton. At this point, both we thevenin and i -moton are computed. Okay. Uh, v7 was 100 minus 140 over 3, and I not on is minus 14 over 17, and that gives us 170 over 3. Okay, ohms. That's our 7 distance. So we have 7 distance, we have the 7 voltage, so that means we can. Uh, now construct the thevenin equivalent circuit. This dotted box is the thevenin equivalent circuit seen by the resistor. Thevenin equivalent. Seen by our design resistor R. And from A to B we have design parameter, resistance R, and the polarity was given to be plus for A and minus for B. Okay, and that voltage is called BR. And now with this much simpler circuit than the original one, we can now easily tackle the last part of the problem, which was choose R, the resistance, so that this voltage appearing across terminals A and B equals minus 7 volts. So what we want is Vr equals minus 7 volts. And for that, how we will achieve that goal is by choosing the proper value for the resistance. Design parameter, therefore, is the resistance of. this voltage in terms of R, that voltage in terms of R is what you can write in all equations, but there's no need because it's a very simple topology. There's a voltage source and it's connected to two resistors in uh, series. Okay. Since it's the same current that's visiting both of those uh, 
resistors, their ratio of their voltages must equal the ratio of their resistances. Okay? And also, in addition to that, by KVL, the sum of their voltages must equal to the voltage pro provided by the voltage source and combine those two pieces, we can write what is called the voltage division equation. Okay? Which says that Vr, the voltage of this resistor, okay, equals this resistance divided by the overall resistance seen by the voltage source, which is this plus that, times the voltage provided by the voltage source. Okay? So Vr equals R over R plus 170 over 3. This is the voltage seen, uh, resistance seen by the voltage source. And then times the voltage of the voltage source, which is my, minus 140 over 3. Okay? Now this is Vr. It's clearly a function of the resistance R. So you play with R, the R changes. And then what we want is we want to choose an R such that this voltage equals minus 7 volts. That's our design goal. This equals minus 7, and this equation will tell you how to choose R. Okay. Rearranging the terms, we can write this equation, rewrite this equation as follows 3R plus 170 equals 7. And from this equation, it's clear that we should pick the resistance to equal 10 ohms. Okay, so that's that's our that's the optimal value for this, or the, the right value for that purpose. Note that it's much easier to figure out what the right R should be using from this uh, using the thematic coolant circuit compared to the uh, the original circuit. Now, before we finish this lecture, let's also see an example where, again, we talk about equivalence that is uh, subject of equivalence that is figuring out the input resistance uh, for, a, uh, for a given one. But we already had some examples, but not already in the past, but those examples didn't contain a component which we haven't used yet, which we haven't, uh, although we see the thermal equations, we haven't used yet, and that component is ideal transform. So let's see one example in which we have an ideal transformer and how to tackle that. Here is our second Now this is the one board. It does not uh, contain any independent sources. Okay. Therefore, uh, this one board defined through these terminals can be represented by or equivalent to one uh, resistor, and that the resistance of that resistor is what we're calling the input resistance. Okay. So in this question, we will try to figure out the input resistance for this one board without any sources. Now, before we do that, let's remember the ideal transformer equations. Okay. Here in this corner, 
we call ideal transformer. Quite just a term of importance for ideal transformer. So this is component. Plus minus V1. I okay, so the current, suppose that the current's entry from how we label the thing is, such that we put the current such that it enters from the delta terminal, I1, and likewise here I2, and then the voltages come from, the polar voltages come from, as the sign convention. And here we have two numbers, N1 and N2, and they we set are the uh, the turns ratio. Okay. Now the equations are v1 over n1 equals v2 over n2. So that's the equation that relates the voltages. And as for currents, n1 i1 plus n2 i2 equals zero. Since we had an ideal transformer in this one port, we have to make use of those two equations if you want to get the answer. Okay. Now, having quickly remembered that highly transform equations which we will use in this example, let's figure out the input resistance. Okay. Now that this is not a very simple one port, although it has just a few components because of the uh, ID transformer. Therefore, how are we going to compute this? By using the method of connecting a test source across the terminals of the one. Okay, so let's figure out the voltage of this one hand test source that we connect. Okay, then here we have one hand. And this uh, independent current source will generate a voltage across its terminals, and that voltage is uh, what we call it V. And then V over the current, which is 1, must give us input resistance. Okay. So, let's do the labeling for no voltage method. Suppose that this is our reference node, and then here let this be E1, and let this node be E2. Okay. okay, and we have this current, I1, which is the current for the first coil of the ion transformer, and let's call this current as I2, current of the second coil. And let's write down the equations. Equation at node 1, okay, we're talking about KCR. Yeah? We have this current plus this current plus that current plus that current equals zero. What's this current? This current is E1 minus the voltage of this node divided by 4. But note that we didn't label this node here, and the reason is as follows. Here we have a current source, therefore, no matter what resistance value this resistor has, it will always be the same current that's flowing over it, which is 1 in that direction. Therefore, to write down this current, we don't need to know this node voltage because we already know the current. And this current in that direction is minus 1 amp. Okay? So we have that for minus 1, which is this current. And then we have this current, which is E1 over 3. Okay, and then we have this current, which is E1 minus E2 divided by 2. E1 minus E2 divided by 2. And finally, we have this current. Note that this current we cannot express at this stage in terms of the node voltages, our formulation variables. Therefore, we have to increase the number of formulation variables. And how we're going to do is do that is we're going to consider I1 and I2 also uh, are one of our two of our formulation variables. Okay. Therefore, we're going to write this current directly in terms of I1 plus I1 equals zero. So that's uh, that's our first equation. Since we have four unknowns, E1, E2, I1, I2, we require three more equations. Let's move on to the second node and write KCL here. Node 2. I2 plus this current, which is E2 over 2, and that current plus E2 minus E1 plus E2 over 2. 
minus E1 over 2 must equal 0. Okay, that's our second equation. And that's all that it, uh, can come from KCL. Okay, we cannot write any further equation from KCL. So we have to use something we haven't used yet, and those equations are determined equations for the ideal transform. Okay, the voltage of ideal transform in this case is if this is I1, here we have plus minus V1, and this is plus minus V2. Clearly, V1 is no other than E1, and V2 is no other than E2. Okay, therefore, we can break the right voltage equations in terms of non voltages. Okay. IT equations. Okay, we have. Voltage equation E1 over N1, N1 is 3, equals E2 over N2, N2 is 2. Okay, so that makes three equations. We need one less equation, and that's the current equation. Okay, and 3 I1 plus 2 I2, because N1 is 3 and N2 is 2, must equal 2. Okay, so we have four equations. And Four. And we have four unknowns. That means we should be able to obtain the answer. And if you write down, figure out the details or use computer help, let's say, E1 turns out to be 18 over 11 volts. Okay. So knowing E1 means we know this voltage. And now we have to figure out this voltage, which is V. This voltage equals E1 plus this V4 ohm, let's say. And what's V4 ohm? It's very simple, because the current flowing through 4 ohm, we already know, it's 1 amp. Therefore, V4 ohm is 4 times 1, which is 4. So 4 plus E1, which is over there, equals V. And V over 1 gives us R E1. Then V equals voltage of the forum resistor plus E1, and that's 4 times 1 plus 18 over 11, and that makes 62 over 11 volts. Okay? 62 over Okay, 11 divided by 1 amp gives us the resistance, zero resistance. Hence, our input must be 62 over 11 ohms.